All right, if you guys could please turn to the page in your notes um, that looks like this, uh, 1.4, Measure and Classify Angles. All right, an angle. I think most of you guys already kind of know what an angle is. An angle looks something like this. There's two different rays that share an endpoint. Okay? I'd like to draw your attention to this symbol that I drew here. This means angle. This is my shorthand for angles. Anytime I draw something that looks like this, think angle. All right? All right, the sides of an angle, these are the sides of the angle. This and this. Okay? In an angle, the rays are called the sides of the angle. Okay? Now, the corner is called the vertex. Okay? So the end point that the two rays share, that is the vertex of the angle. All right. Okay, the measure of an angle. At some point this unit, we're going to be doing a protractor ac activity in which um, I'll have you guys measure different kinds of angles. For now, just write down this definition and, uh, and the different kinds of angles. I'll draw you guys some pictures. And, but we will, be going over, we, will, we will be going more in depth in how to measure angles later this unit. This definition is kind of long, so feel free to pause the video here if you need to. Okay. Um, a couple notation things I would like to point out. In angle AOB, when you name an angle, you're generally going to be using three letters. You can use one letter in certain circumstances, but in this case, we're going to be using three letters. Angle AOB... The O, because it O is the vertex, O has to be in the middle. You could call it angle BOA instead. So angle AOB or BOA is fine as long as the O, the vertex, is in the middle. Um, rays OA and OB can be matched one-to-one -one with real numbers from 0 to 180. All right, I'm going to attempt to draw a protractor here. Okay, this is my attempt at drawing a protractor. Um, protractors look uh, kind of like this. They have numbers from 0 to 180 along the semicircle, 90 being right in the middle. And so when you measure an angle, you can measure it kind of the way you measure a segment with a ruler. We will be doing this activity in class, so for now you can just draw a picture of what I'm talking about. Acute angles are angles that are less than 90 degrees. Once again, this little symbol is angle. The little circle next to the number represents degrees. I think most of you guys know that, but just in case someone doesn't. All right. A right angle is a measure is, is an angle that is measures exactly 90 degrees. Okay? An obtuse angle, which is what I happen to have drawn here, is an angle that measures between 90 and 180. Okay? Okay. A straight angle is an angle that looks pretty much like a straight line. It's an angle that measures exactly 180 degrees. So, straight line. Congruent angles, kind of like congruent segments, these are angles that have the same measure. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. I'll draw a picture of that. So, for example, in this picture, if this ray cuts this angle exactly in half, this is an angle bisector, okay? These arcs indicate that these two angles are congruent. Sometimes arcs are drawn like this, sometimes you'll see it drawn like this, an arc with a little dash in it, kind of like the dashes in the segments, but you don't need the dash. Sometimes I draw it, sometimes I don't, okay? Just a reminder, this symbol and this symbol means angle. This symbol means congruent. Okay, so name three angles in the, in the diagram. Well, we have angle ABC. Or we could call it angle CBA. We also have angle C, B, D. Remember, the vertex always has to be in the middle. That's why my B is always in the middle. Um, C, B, D could also be called D, B, C. So there's this angle, this angle, 
There's also the big angle, angle A, B, D. Or we could call it angle D, B, A, as long as uh, B is in the middle because V is their, B is their vertex. Okay? Okay. All right, let's go on to page two. Postulate three, protractor postulate. Consider OB and point A on one side of OB. The rays the, uh, of the form OA can be matched one to one with the real numbers from zero to 180. Okay, the measure of angle AOB is equal to the absolute value of the difference between the real numbers for OA and OB. Okay, in this case, it looks like mm, 113 degrees, roughly. Example two, use the diagram to find the measure of the indicated angle, then classify the angle. All right, um, angle WSR, angle WSR would be this angle here. Okay. SR is lined up with zero on the outer scale of the protractor. SW passes through 65 degrees on the outer scale. We call it the inner scale and outer scale because this scale is on the outside and this scale is on the inside. Okay? So the measure, this little m means measure. The measure of angle WSR is 65 degrees. It's between 0 and 90 degrees, so it is an acute angle. Okay. Ray ST, um, we're looking at this one now, angle TSW. TSW would be this angle here. Okay. ST is lined up with zero on the inner scale of the protractor. SW passes through, looks like about 115 on the inner scale. On the outer scale, it passes through 65, but because I'm using the inner scale for ST, I have to use the inner scale for SW also. So the measure of angle TSW is 115 degrees. And because it's between 90 and 180, it is an obtuse angle. All right, the measure of angle RST. RST is a straight line, so it's 180 degrees. It is a straight angle. Oops. Angle VST is clearly a right angle. It's 90 degrees exactly. Okay. All right. For this checkpoint, I think you guys can do these on your own. Go ahead and pause the video here if you like. Let's go on to page three. Okay, postulate four, angle addition postulate. If P is in the interior of angle RST, then the measure of RST is equal to the sum of the, of the measures RSP and PST. All right, so basically, if you have, if this angle here is, I don't know, 20 degrees, and this over here is, 60 degrees, then the whole thing would be 80. You could just add these two angles together to get the big angle. Okay? 
some measures of angles RSP and angle PST. Okay. Okay. So let's do an example. Given that the measure of GFJ, so this whole thing, is a hundred. A hundred and fifty-five degrees. Find these two angles. Now, according to the angle addition postulate, we know that GFJ is equal to this angle plus this angle. So the measure of angle uh, GFH plus the measure of angle HFJ. That's the angle addition postulate. We know the measure of angle GFJ is one hundred and fifty-five degrees. Okay, and we know that these two angles are these little expressions in terms of x. Okay, so we substitute. So, 155, I'm going to combine like terms. 4x plus 4x is 8x. 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. 155 minus 3 is uh, 152. I subtracted 3 from both sides. Now I'm going to divide each side by 8. So the 8's cancel out. If you can do this in your head, great. If not, you can always do long division. Okay, so we solved for x, but that's not what the question's asking for. They want us to solve for the actual angles. So we've got to plug it in. We know that x equals 19. GFH is, let's see here, 4x plus 4. That's what it says here. So I can plug in 19. 4 times 19 plus 4. Um, let's see, 19 times 4, 76, 76 plus 4 is 80, so this is 80 degrees, HFJ is 4X minus 1, 4 times 19 we already know is 76, minus 1 is 75, so the measure of angle GFH is 80 degrees, and the measure of angle uh, HFJ is 75 degrees. And if you add them together, you get 155 degrees, which is what it should equal. Alright, go ahead and do this checkpoint. You can pause the video here. Let's go on to the last page. <coughs> Identify all pairs of congruent angles in the diagram. Okay, so first of all, if you look at the arcs, angle P is congruent to angle N because each of them have one arc. Okay. Angle L has two arcs, so does angle M. So these two angles are also congruent. Okay. Now, if angle P is 100 deg er, 120 degrees, what is angle N? Well, if angle P is, because angle P is congruent to angle N, that means the measure of angle P equals the measure of angle N. Once again, this little M indicates measure. So, the measure of angle N is also 120 degrees. Alright. Okay, example 5, last example. In the diagram at the right, uh, WY bisects, that means it cuts in half, this angle. Uh, XWY is 29 degrees. Find XWZ. Okay, so. This is 29 degrees, and it's bisected. So this is also 29 degrees. By the angle addition postulate, the measure of angle XWZ equals the measure of angle XWY plus the measure of angle YWZ. Remember, the W has to be in the middle because the W is the vertex. Because it bisects uh, XWZ, we know